So good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Um, I'm Sanjeev from Sai University Admissions Team. We have with us a very special guest today, uh, Professor Ram Prasad Krishnamurti, who has recently joined us as Associate Professor in the School of Computing and Data Science. He will be today talking to you about uh, increasing emerging trends in artificial intelligence and machine learning, and also about applications in computer vision and natural language processing and the emerging trends in those. So a brief introduction, Dr. Ram Prasad has more than 15 years of experience compromising on research and teaching in the areas of machine learning, computer vision, biometrics, software development, and algorithm design. Dr. Ram Prasad finished his PhD, his earned his PhD in computer science from Universidad Autonoma de Madrid in Spain in 2015 with the highest distinction and was also awarded the title International Doctor. He received the prestigious European Union Marie Curie Fellowship for his doctoral research work. His PhD thesis got nominated for the European Biometrics Research and Industry Award. His graduation was from Chennai Mathematical Institute and his postdoctoral research work was at Dublin University, Ireland, through a Marie Curie Fellowship on an ambitious European Union project called Assist ID, where he was involved in developing artificial intelligence based assistive technology tools for children with intellectual disabilities and autism. He has also been a visiting researcher at the University of Twente, the Netherlands, and University of Harmstad at Sweden. Further to that, he also has an entrepreneurial sprint where he is the founder and director of Vision Corp Research and Development Private Limited, which focused on consultancy and training in the domain of artificial intelligence and computer vision. Before joining us at SAI, he was associate at Shibnada University Chennai as an assistant professor. So I think without further ado, over to you, Professor. Thank you, uh, Sanji, for the introduction. Let me share this screen. Okay. Uh, can you please confirm whether you can see the slide? Yes, uh, I can see so. the slides. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. I can see thank it. You. Yes. Okay. Thanks. Okay. So, uh, good evening, everyone, and welcome to this webinar on these advancements in artificial intelligence. So, I actually included a brief uh, introduction about uh, highlighting my profile, but uh, Sanjeev has already given an introduction. I will just uh, quickly uh, run through that. So uh, I was the founder and director of Vision Corp uh, Research and Development Private Limited. So I was work primarily working in the domain of computer vision uh, and biometrics as well. Uh, prior, prior to associating with uh, Sai University, I, I was a faculty at Shivananda University, Chennai. And I did my postdoctoral research work from Dublin City University, Ireland, uh, through a Marie Curie Fellowship. And my PhD in computer science, I, I, I did from the Autonomous University of Madrid, Spain. That was also through a Marie Curie Fellowship. So it's one of the prestigious fellowships in Europe. I was happy to uh, get it twice. Uh, to do both my doctoral and postdoctoral research works. And while doing my uh, doctoral work, I was also a visiting researcher at Hampstead University, Sweden, and also a visiting researcher at the University of Trondheim, in Netherlands. So it, it was really uh, a great experience working across like four European universities. It was a, a very nice uh, exposure. And I got the opportunity to work with uh, some of the best minds in these uh, domain of artificial intelligence and computer vision, to be more specific. I graduated from Chennai Mathematical Institute. So this is a brief profile about uh, myself. And now uh, coming to the advancements in artificial intelligence. So uh, I, I'm, in this talk, I'm not going to make it anything very technical, but it's going to be uh, a bit generic uh, so that it caters to uh, audience with in all levels. So now coming uh, to uh, industrial revolutions, uh, can, can anyone uh, say in the, from the participants in, in which industrial revolution we are currently at? Any answers? 
Have, have you come across that? Anyone? Okay. So, uh, so let me just uh, I, uh, sequentially go through. So the industrial revolution on point zero. So that happened in the 18th century. You can say like uh, the theme of that industrial revolution was related with steam engines. So that is the simplest way to put it. So the steam engine based revolution was our industrial revolution on point zero in the 18th century. And in the early 20th century, it was all about electricity. So you can say the industrial revolution 2.0, which was in the early 20th century, focused on electricity and related uh, innovations, electricity based innovations. And towards the late 20th century, uh, we had this industrial revolution 3.0, which was all about information technology. So, so that is the simplest way to put it. So all IT related innovations happened in the late 20th century. And we are currently at the industrial revolution 4.0 from the early 21st century onwards. And it is all about automation. So when we talk about automation, so that comes under the domain of data science and artificial intelligence. And that's what we are going to focus on. So when we talk about artificial intelligence, so this is like a very common term that we uh, encounter in our day to day life, even in, in many medias in movies, everywhere we come across this terminology, artificial intelligence. So if we are if we are asked to uh, define what do you mean by an artificial intelligence, different people have sort of a different kind of explanations. If you go through like textbooks, there are various different kinds of uh, explanations. Some can even go very technical. But the simplest way, the sim in simple terms, we can say that artificial intelligence is all about automation. So we wanted to automate stuffs. Uh, so now we ask, what are we interested in automating? So in artificial intelligence, what we are interested in automating is those tasks that we humans are comfortable and good at. So we wanted to automate those steps using a computer, using a software, essentially. So, but software alone doesn't comprise of artificial intelligence. The software combined with a hardware or, or, or a mechanical part can also be part of an artificial intelligence. So it is not just software alone, but it can also be uh, a mechanical part of hardware like a robot or even like a self-driving car these all are part of artificial intelligence and now the question is about how can we build artificial intelligence systems so or these sort of automation systems so when we talk about self-driving car so it is essentially automating a, a driving task of a human intelligence so that's what we are we are trying to automate and when we wanted to automate, we might take uh, or combine different technologies to achieve that automation, but everything comes under artificial intelligence. So now the basic question is, how can we build these artificial intelligence systems? What is the approach used to build them? So people, scientists have tried various different approaches to come up with artificial intelligence systems. Uh, one of the earliest approach was referred to as expert systems or symbolic AI. So to, to be more specific, artificial intelligence is a subfield of computer science. And as I, as I mentioned, we are interested in automating tasks. So one of the initial approach was these expert systems or symbolic AI. Uh, the simplest way to think about expert systems or symbolic AI is about writing some rules explicitly to automate. That is like, uh, uh, if, if you are familiar with programming, for example, then we can write several condition loops. Like if a certain condition is true, then perform a specific task. Else if certain other condition is true, then perform this task and so forth. So it is like writing conditions or rules 
to automate a task. So that is what essentially these uh, expert systems, a symbolic AI is all about in, in simple terms, though technically there are a lot of things involved there, but this is the simplest way we can understand a rule-based approach to build artificial intelligence system. But uh, researchers did encounter some challenges with this rule-based uh, approach to build AI. So the challenge was that uh, for, for a given task, say for example, you wanted to build a robot that self-navigates uh, itself from a particular source to a destination. So while the process of self-navigating, it could encounter a lot of hurdles. So from a programmer's or a researcher's point of view, it is impossible to enumerate all the kind of situations that a robot will encounter in an uh, unconstrained environment. So maybe in a controlled environment, we know what are the obstacles that uh, our system will encounter so that we can write some specific conditions of what, how to handle them. But if you wanted to deploy it in an uncontrolled environment, there can be a lot of different obstacles or situations that the system will encounter uh, in, under which it will fail. So that was one limitation that the symbolic AI approach encountered. Like it is not possible to enumerate all the possible conditions that a system will encounter. So researchers did found it a bit challenging how to advance this artificial intelligence system. That is when a new kind of an approach called machine learning came up. So it is all about uh, bringing in statistical approaches towards building AI systems. So machine learning is uh, it was also synonymously known as statistical learning because statistics plays an important role. And now we can ask then what is the difference between statistics and machine learning? So you can say like predominantly statistics is used in machine learning, but statistics plus some sort of a compute computing capability is what machine learning is all about. So machine learning is an approach which was used to build AI systems, which sort of uh, resolved the challenges that a symbolic AI or a rule-based AI system faced. So when we say statistics plays an important role in machine learning, so that gives us some indication that what is important when we talk about machine learning. And when we talk about statistics, data is important. So only if we have data, we can perform some statistics on it. Uh, so for example, some descriptive statistics like uh, given a set of numbers, you wanted to find what is the minimum among the set of numbers, or what is the maximum among that set of numbers, or what is the average, or some, we, which we also call it as mean, or what is the median, uh, of these uh, set of numbers. So, so these are some examples that I'm talking about, like if you need data to perform statistics. So likewise, when you wanted machine learning systems to build AI systems, so we need relevant data to build that. And it was easier to collect uh, data for many of the problems. So it was a successful approach to build artificial intelligence system. So machine learning, was sort of popular starting from like 1990s onwards. Artificial intelligence is, is not a new idea per se, even though it is very popular in, in recent years, but this idea existed something from 1950s onwards. So the idea of artificial intelligence was discussed among the computer scientists and the progress has been happening from 1950s onwards. The 1990s, we saw a significant approach called machine learning to build AI systems with which we are able to come up with many commercial applications. In the last decade, in the, for the past 10 years, there was one particular type of a machine learning approach, which is referred to as deep learning, which became very prominent. Even though we say like machine learning with statistical approaches, we are able to solve certain automation tasks, there are also challenges there, especially when we talk about 
uh, domains like computer vision and natural language processing. So what do you mean by computer vision? So it is like given an image, a simple thing would be given an image, you need to find out what are the various types of objects present in an image. So that was not an easy task because a particular object can appear in various different ways in an image. It is not that easy to recognize what are the objects present inside an image. Uh, that is one example of computer vision. Uh, another one example of natural language processing could be like you, you give a paragraph about a review of a movie, for example. And then you want a program to determine whether that movie review was a positive review or a negative review. So these are some examples of natural language processing. So how do you understand the text and come up with some description about that particular text? So uh, as part of natural language processing, I was just talking about text data, but you can also have speech data as well. So speech as well as text both comes under the domain of natural language processing. Text being more prominent because that is humongously available online. And when we pick these computer vision and natural language processing problems, there are also several sub problems in these domains. And with deep learning approaches, we were able to address them much better than the conventional statistical machine learning approaches that we were using. So in the past 10 years, this deep learning has been becoming very popular in solving these visual and language challenges. And at the same time, it is a fast advancing domain. Deep learning is a new name, new in the sense like very popular from the, for the past 10 years, but it is not, the idea is not something new. This also existed something uh, way back from 1960s onwards. Back then it was called as artificial neural network. So deep learning is sort of a new manifestation name of that old concept artificial neural network. And this is the current trending approach to build artificial intelligence system. And in this particular webinar, we are going to look at few of such interesting applications that were developed specifically using this deep learning approach. So that's what we are going to look at, uh, which uh, focuses on the computer vision and the natural language processing domains. So before uh, getting into that, I just wanted to introduce you to these three computer scientists uh, who are like phenomenal in contributing to advancing this deep learning domain, which is the current state of the art uh, in artificial intelligence specifically. So Joshua Bencio, Jeff Hinton, and Jan Lacon. So these are three computer scientists uh, they are also professors uh, in, in various universities. They were so phenomenal so that they, they were given the highest award in the domain of computer science. Uh, you should also know that uh, there is no category for computer science in Nobel Prize. So there is no Nobel Prize for computer science per se. That is the case with mathematics as well. So there is no category for mathematics in the Nobel Prize uh, category. But there are other prizes which are considered equivalent to Nobel Prize in, in these domains, in computer science or in mathematics. So when it comes to computer science, so there is an award called Turing Award, the ACM AM Turing Award, which is considered equivalent to Nobel Prize in uh, computer science. And this our Turing Award has been given to these three computer scientists in the year 2018, just for their contributions in advancing the domain of artificial intelligence. So Joshua Bencio and Jeff Hinton, so they both are from Canada. Uh, Joshua Bencio uh, is from the University of Montreal and Jeff Hinton from University of Toronto. And Jan Lacun, I was from the New York University. So they all are professors there, but they also hold industry affiliations. Like Jan Lacun also leads the 
artificial intelligence research group of uh, facebook which which was parent company now which is popular as meta so he leads the artificial intelligence group of facebook jeff hinton he leads the artificial intelligence group of google so there is a uh, specific group called google brain so he leads that particular research group and yoshua benjo also do a lot of consultancy works in the domain of artificial intelligence to many companies so this is how they are uh, interested in and uh, when you get into learning uh, this particular concept of machine learning in depth you would understand the significant contributions made by these computer scientists and it, and it's really well appreciated as well so when we talk about deep learning approaches those deep learning revolution happened as i was mentioning like some 10 years back so this happened in 2012 in the context of uh, a world level competition about image classification so which is referred to as uh, the large scale visual recognition challenge abbreviated as ils erc based on a data set called imagenet so if we ask okay what is what do you mean by that what what is that particular competition so the the problem to solve is that if you are given an image you should be able to say what object is present inside that image say for example if you are given this first image you should say what was that object so what was it was a mite so this in the second image uh, the object present is a container ship so here it is a motor scooter here it is a leopard so this is what we call as a classification problem so we needed to predict what is the object present inside that image so that it becomes uh, the prediction the category so in the year 2010 and 2011 uh, these in this particular competition the error rate was like in the range 28% 26% and so forth so in short what we should understand from this graph is that in 2010 2011 the error rate uh, was high in, in terms of making the prediction that means there will be misclassifications so maybe you are given the image of a leopard but it would just classify it as a dog then we say it is a misclassification so that is the error that we are talking about so that sort of an error was high in these years 2010 2011 so and to also mention this competition was uh, completely organized by stanford university's computer vision group and it is still maintained by stanford university and in the year 2012 we saw a significant reduction in the error rate so something from 26% error we quickly jumped into a 16% error and in the computer vision domain this is considered as a significant improvement uh, in terms of the accuracy so 26% means uh, say, say out of 100 categories we would make uh, so 26 of them were wrongly predicted but here only 16 of them were wrongly predicted so that is the easiest way to understand that this particular numeric so that is considered a significant improvement and people started to look at okay what was that approach in 2012 which helped in such a significant reduction in the error rate and that is when people noticed that in the year 2012 it was a deep learning model or an approach that was used in this particular competition and it gave such a significant result before that no one actually bothered to use these deep learning approaches uh, in this competition it was for the first time in 2012 uh, the research group from jeff hinton so he was one of these uh, turing award winner jeff hinton so his phd student actually Uh, submitted this deep learning based approach and won this with a very significant margin and then research labs from all over the world and high profile industries like google microsoft facebook they all started to look at 
the potential of this deep learning approach. They, they funded significantly to advance this domain. And you can see like year after year, the error rate has been significantly reducing. So that was a, a, a huge advancement in the domain of deep learning. So several new approaches have been developed in the, in the last 10 years. So this is one new uh, domain where you will see that theories, new theories have been developed year after the year. So it is such a, such a fast advancing domain. Unlike uh, traditional computer science where you don't see so much of uh, new approaches being developed, but in the domain of artificial intelligence and data science, we happen to see a lot of new things are being uh, introduced. So if we ask what was that particular turning point where people started to use deep learning approaches straight away from 2012 onwards, the important reason was about this humongous uh, availability of data. So ImageNet is a, is a large collection of images. It contains something like 1.4 million images and contains some thousand different categories. So by categories, I mean uh, a cat, dog, uh, a bicycle, scooter, auto, bus, and so forth. So likewise, there are thousand different categories and you had something like 1.4 million images. So 1 million is like 10 lakh. So you had 1.4 million images that were, can be used uh, for these uh, training purposes. So as I mentioned, when you wanted to use machine learning, data is very important. And if you have more data, better accuracy you get in terms of prediction. So that was one reason. And the second reason was that there are people developed a lot of mathematical approaches to build deep learning systems. And additionally, the improvement in the computing power. So for example, the gaming industry did boom. Like people are interested in purchasing more and more powerful GPUs, especially for the purpose of smoothly running high resolution uh, intensive games. But it came as a boon to the researchers in the computer vision domain that they could use these uh, high performance GPUs for their research works. And that is how the revolution in deep learning happened. So that happened like 10 years back. And from that time onwards, deep learning has been the important research domain under data science. So data science is sort of an umbrella term under which various different things comes in. Say for example, data analytics, trying to understand about data so which we refer to as data analysis is part of data science. Coming up with these kind of machine learning models. So that is part of uh, data science. So artificial intelligence is a part of data science. So you can say like there are several things that are, that comes under data science. So data science is sort of an umbrella term that we talk. So we know that these are the reasons the humongous availability of data set, good algorithms as well as good computing power helped in advancing this deep learning domain. That is in one way, in another way to say we are advancing in artificial intelligence in general. So we were talking about like 10 years back, the revolution happened. And in the last two years, I mean, in 2022 and also in 2021, we saw several innovations in the domain of artificial intelligence. So a lot of advancements in AI applications. So there was a company called DeepMind, which is based in UK, which was later acquired by Google. So now DeepMind is part of Google, but though initially it started out as a startup, but then it was acquired by Google. They came up with a very interesting model called Alpha Fold 2. So previously we saw about uh, approaches or machine learning approaches which could solve computer vision problem. So that is more of a, you can say it is in the IT domain. But now we are able to 
solve important problems in life sciences as well. So in, in short, this data science or these various approaches that comes under data science is not just restricted only to information technology domain, but wherever you have humongous amount of data in all these places, we can apply various aspects of data science. And in 2021, July, we saw a significant contribution of artificial intelligence in the life science domain. So to, to put it in simple terms, if you are given an on-dimensional sequence of amino acids, there is an AI program that can predict how these amino acids will fold into a proteins because it's, it's essentially the folding of amino acids. It's what we refer to as proteins. So it could, the model could predict what kind of protein folding it will arise for a given sequence of amino acids. And that was a, another sort of a ImageNet revolutionary moment for deep learning. So if we could predict these kind of protein structures, it helps in uh, coming up with medicines for ma many uh, challenging diseases. Otherwise, it would take long number of years to come up with such medicines. But with these kind of AI approaches, we can sort of make it much more faster than the traditional uh, approaches. So here is a cube, uh, graph which shows like how DeepMind was able to improve the, even their previous approach and come up with a second version whose prediction accuracy was something close to 90%. And that is considered a very good uh, improvement and a sort of an accuracy in terms of making these predictions. So this is one place where we see like how artificial intelligence can be applied in various different domains. DeepMind also came up with another very interesting uh, AI program in February 2022, early this year which is referred to as alpha code. So what does this alpha code do? So I guess many of you would have heard about competitive programming. So it's like in competitive programming, the problem statements are a bit more intense and harder. So coming up with solution for competitive programming is not that easy. And, and one such example is about informatics Olympiad. So if you look at take informatics Olympiad problems. So the problem statements are, the problem statement itself is so large, like it, it will feel like half a page or, or an entire page. And trying to understand what the problem statement is and then thinking about a solution for that, it, it's, it's not that easy. It is a, it is a humongous uh, process. What DeepMind did was that it was able to come up with an AI program that can read and understand a competitive programming problem and then generate solution for that. So that is considered another significant milestone in the AI domain contributed by DeepMind. So there is a public platform called CodeForce, which supports competitive programming. And this AI program competed with human participants and it stood among the top 54 percent so in that particular competition around 5000 more than 5000 human participants were there along with that this ai program called alpha cold was also competing and it was ranked among the top 54 percent so that itself is a, a very significant achievement so so this is just some uh, graphs showing about uh, it's uh, scaling up with the, the problem so solving and it ranked like the top 54% in that code force competition. So here is a brief example. Like if you give your problem statement like this, it is like, this is also part of natural language processing. So the program has to read, somehow understand what is the problem statement and then think about an approach to solve that. And you need to also comfortable with the programming language. So this alpha code program, this AI program 
could generate solutions in two different programming languages. It could develop either in Python, which is a very popular programming language, and it could also generate solutions in C++. And the interesting part is that this particular Python code was generated by an AI program to solve this problem statement given to it. So that is a, a very, uh, uh, what to say, like it is not that easy to come up with such AI programs. So we feel like these AI programs has some sort of problem solving capability of its own. So it has been trained on uh, a humongous data set, as I said, like a, for any artificial intelligence system developed using machine learning approaches, you need humongous amount of data. And uh, what Google's uh, DeepMind did was that they took several problem statements and its corresponding solutions, and they trained a model to generate these kind of solutions. So it could output the solution either in Python or in C++. So this is uh, a quick block diagram approach towards how they uh, came up with this particular alpha code model. So we are talking about uh, AI systems capability to understand text data. Google came up with a very interesting AI model called Palm. So it's abbreviated as Palm. So this, this stands for pathway language model, which is a humongous model. It contains something in the order of 540 billion parameters, so, or you can say like some variables that are required to take an input and generate a particular output. So 1 billion is like uh, 100 crore. So there are like 540 billion parameters. So that means it's a humongous AI model. Even to train that you need uh, a, a high computing facility as well. But a, a big company like Google can afford to have such a high performance computing capability. Because from the industry point of view, Google is one company which is pioneering in the domain of artificial intelligence. And, and many of the advanced AI systems that I'm talking about, all these innovations came from Google. So either straight away from Google or Google's own subsidiary company like DeepMind. So this, what is special about this Palm, this pathway language model? So it is a model which is more generalized in terms of handling various different subtasks of natural language processing. So now what do you mean by various uh, subtasks of natural language processing? So here, here the Google has shown a quick summary of various different tasks that this particular AI model can handle. Uh, say for example, question answering. So if you pose a question to that, it will understand what is that question and answers up accordingly. It is, uh, it is not very much similar to the alpha code where you are giving a competitive programming problem, but these are like sort of a conversation. So you can initiate a conversation with an AI system. It can do some arithmetic, uh, arithmetics as well. It can do some text summarizations, like if you have a, a large text body, it can generate a summary of that entire text, capturing all the important concepts and summarizing them. It can translate, for example, from one language to another, say from English to French, if you wanted to translate a text, this particular AI model was able to do that. One interesting thing that uh, I noticed here was about its capability to explain jokes. So if you give, if you just type in a joke, it can actually explain what is that joke. Say, say something of this, this sort. So if you, if you just type in a joke and this AI model, Palm, can interpret that joke and give an explanation about what that joke is. So that is really a very uh, interesting AI application, especially uh, in the natural language processing domain. So this happened in April, 2022. The importance of the Palm is that it is, it can, this is one model which can solve several sub problems, but 
it is also common in the AI domain that you have some artificial intelligence programs that are good at solving one particular task and it is extremely good at doing that. So that is also a kind of research that happens in the domain of artificial intelligence. In that, along that line, Google had one artificial intelligence program called Lambda. So Lambda stands for this language models for dialogue applications, uh, which is also a significantly uh, huge AI program, which contains something in the order of 137 billion parameters. So Lambda was also very controversial recently. So it is, it is about a dialogue based application that you can initiate a chat with that AI system, but it is like text. It's not a speech based conversation, but it is a text based conversation, something like a chatbot, but more, more intelligent chatbot. So that is the simplest way to put it. So you can initiate a conversation and it, it gives reasonable uh, responses to our uh, inputs. So that is uh, the speciality of this Lambda. The controversial thing about this Lambda was that uh, the Google engineer who was involved in developing this uh, AI system, he made a public remark that uh, AI systems have started to become sentient. So this here is that uh, uh, controversy which I have cited from uh, a science magazine called New Scientist, which was published in June. Uh, this was published in June, 2022. The controversy is this. So he said like the AI system has become sentient. And if he had not known that he was actually uh, conversing with the AI program, he would have believed that he is actually conversing with a, a six year or an eight year old kid. The, the fact was that he felt that the AI system started exhibiting some fear. So the sentient being starting to express some emotions and feelings. And specifically he was highlighting about the system started to exhibit fear. So that is not very common, uh, it is very difficult to program in these kind of uh, emotions and feelings into a system. But he felt that. But that became sort of a controversy and Google actually uh, suspended that engineer from, from working in Google. But what I'm trying to say is that uh, the AI systems are becoming so advanced that even it is difficult for humans to identify or to distinguish it from human and artificial intelligence. Okay, so uh, this is all a text only based processing that we were talking about, but the very recent innovations in AI is also moving towards combining both artificial, uh, both natural language processing and computer vision. So that is the next level of uh, innovations happening in the domain of artificial intelligence. Along that line, this particular AI program called Flamingo, which is uh, again uh, developed by DeepMind, which is the Google subsidiary. So this is popular in the sense of it is a visual language model. So this is about combining both computer vision and natural language processing. Let me just show you an example of how a Flamingo uh, AI program works. So in, it is also sort of a dialogue based conversation, but it can also interpret images. So if you just give this image as input to this particular Flamingo chatbot, it has try to understand what are the contents of this image. And it says like, uh, this is picture of a hockey game. And if we ask which player has the puck, then this Flamingo system was able to even answer that. So the player in the red jersey has the puck. So it is able to understand given only an image, what kind of a game they are playing and also tries to understand about the individual objects inside the image. 
So this is sort of a next level of uh, AI system. And even if we ask, okay, what country is he from? He's able to answer he is from Canada as well. So based on these uh, logos and uh, that sports related uh, logos, it is able to even um, make that prediction that it, he is from Canada. So this is also moving towards uh, creating artificial intelligence that is very much close to human level intelligence. But if we ask, is it possible to bring in all the faculties of uh, uh, human intelligence into an artificial intelligence system? Many serious computer science researchers believe that it is not possible to have or, or to come up with an artificial intelligence system that can completely replace a human being. But we are progressing towards that. So as I was talking about uh, combining uh, artificial uh, intelligence with computer vision and natural language processing, if you are one of the uh, difficult challenge in the domain of computer vision is like, if you are given an image, you just give an image, is it possible to generate a caption which best represents that image? So that is one interesting problem statement that some researchers were working on. And Stanford University uh, is, is one of the initial pioneers in building such an AI system given an image, come up with a caption. So here you need to actually combine both computer vision and natural language processing. Because if you wanted to generate a caption, that actually belongs to natural language processing because this is essentially the text data that you are generating. But to generate appropriate text data, you should also understand what are the objects present inside an image so that you can generate appropriate captions. So that is about combining uh, computer vision and natural language processing. So here are some examples of that. Even though when, whenever we build systems, we cannot have a system with 100% accuracy, there will be some scenarios where the system is not uh, running perfectly fine. So there are also some mistakes that these kind of systems make. Uh, say for example, here for this given input image, the AI system generates like a dog is jumping to catch a frisbee, but that's not actually the case, but it has made a mistake there. But in many of the cases, it works reasonably well. And the entire point of research is about how can we improve these accuracies? So that is where, that is where the research researchers are interested in. This, is, this itself is considered a very difficult problem, given an image, generate a caption. But if we think of a reverse problem, that is to say, if you are given a just a text or a caption, can you automatically generate an image that best represents the caption? So that is a much more harder problem because given an image to generate a caption is easier because you can quickly identify some objects and then come up with this text. But if you are only given a text how can you generate these images? So that is not that easy. It is a much more harder problem. But there is a company called OpenAI, uh, which is based in the US. They came up with a very innovative AI program called Doll E last year. That is trying to address this particular uh, challenging problem of given a text, you, can, you are going to synthesize an image which best represents that particular text. So it is uh, an approach towards combining natural language processing and computer vision. So I'll just show you an example here, but uh, let me go to this particular example, which is easier to explain. So you are giving a, a text like an armchair in the shape of an avocado. And now the AI system doll E synthetically generates images which best represents this text. The funny part is such images never ever existed anywhere in the internet or, or anywhere. Such images never existed. The AI system doll E understands how the avocado fruit looks like. It understands avocado separately. It understands how an armchair 
uh, the shape of an armchair is separately. And then it is somehow trying to combine those knowledge to generate synthetic images that best represents this text. So many of these you can see like this, the shape of the avocado fruit, and it also is resembling an armchair. So that is an amazing improvement. Uh, recently, in, in April 2022, they also came up with a second version of doll e referred to as doll e 2 uh, which can uh, sort of address larger text and the quality of the image being more realistic. Uh, it wouldn't look like a very synthetic image, but it looks like more realistic images. So here you say like, okay, a Shiba Inu dog wearing a beret and a black turtleneck. You can see that based on this text, it has synthetically generated these images. And it is very difficult to even say like, uh, these images are synthetically generated, which are not real. So, it, so that is the level of advancement that has happened in this particular domain. And on top of that, if you wanted to synthetically generate an image, uh, following up with the style of a particular artist, that is also possible. So, and it is in the wild painted in the style of John Adobon. You can see that AI system generates some sort of a painting, which looks like the style of this particular artist. And you can even com combine very strange text and generate unrealistic images, like the unrealistic scenarios like a, a photo of an astronaut riding a horse and is able to synthetically generate such an image like in a space and there is an astronaut riding a horse which is which is unreal but it is still able to generate those sort of ima images so open ai was pioneering in this particular domain of uh, combining computer vision and natural language processing. They are referred to as multimodal uh, systems because uh, they are combining two different domains. So that is why they are referred to as multimodal domains. Uh, since AI, open AI was uh, doing extremely good in this particular problem statement, and we saw that Google was also pioneering in many of the important AI problems. Uh, Google couldn't remain silent by looking at all these innovations that open AI is making. So Google also started working on this particular problem. And they came up with a couple of interesting AI artificial intelligence systems to do a similar task, like given a text, generate an image. So here is an example. So uh, coming up with a text like a robot couple, fine dining with Eiffel Tower in the background. So this is this is not uh, a, a typical uh, caption for which an image can be generated because you are talking about a robot couple. It's not like a human couple or, or any other pair. It's a robot couple and it's fine dining with Eiffel Tower in the background. So if you look at how that image corresponding to this text will looks like, so let us look at that image. So this is how that image, uh, which is synthetically generated by the program. So here it assumes these are a robot couple and they are fine dining with Eiffel Tower in the background. So this is generated by an AI system called ImageN. So it is sort of stands like image generation. So this is the AI system built by Google to, uh, to generate synthetic images. So Imagen uh, roughly contained like 4.6 billion parameters. This also combines natural language processing and computer vision. They released this in May 2022. So that's like a couple of months back. So this is that approach. So I, I don't want to get into the technical details of how uh, these systems work, but uh, this is where, this is how. So it takes a text as input, and then it generates uh, relevant images. And you can also generate it in different resolutions, image resolutions as well. 
they themselves came up with an improved version or it is, we can't say like an improved version but an entirely different approach of solving the same problem which is referred to as party so party uh, stands for pathways auto regressive text to image model so this auto regressive these are some technical terms there are there are some concepts related with that but we can't discuss about those in details but this is this is another innovative uh, ai model developed by google themselves which is sort of much better than even their own image and approach so what it what it is good at what google party is good at it was released in june 2022 uh, they are capable to understand large captions like even if you have multiple sentences in your caption it understands about the those captions and then generates images accordingly so if you say like a close up high contrast photo of sydney opera house sitting next to eiffel tower so that is a very strange combination but it it tries to understand all those uh, text requirement say under a blue night sky of uh, roiling energy exploding yellow stars and radiating souls of blue and it is able to roughly uh, satisfy all that we have mentioned here so this is a much more capable system to understand large text captions so here is another example like a, a photo of an astronaut riding a horse in the forest so we are we are giving more conditions there and uh, the forest with further conditions like there is a river in front of them with water lilies and you can see like after interpreting this particular text this party ai system was able to synthetically generate images uh, that best represents these captions so it's really great that it is able to uh, synthesize images such images never ever existed anywhere so that is the interesting part as i was mentioning about uh, it can understand uh, larger text but it has also the capability to generate images in various styles say for example if you want an image being generated with a dslr quality if you just add this additional term keyword dslr the image generated is similar to that particular uh, style so you, you say a scholarly vampire wearing a vest and a bouti uh, he is reading a book in a coffee shop there is an espresso in a small glass cup on the table and we want it as a dslr quality and this is how uh, an image has been synthetically generated for the same text instead of dslr if you just replace this keyword with uh, if you wanted to make it like an anime representation then you can also do that so you instead of dslr if you just put anime illustration for the same caption with only this particular keyword change it is generating an anime illustration as well so so that is uh, this is the sort of the recent advancements in the ai domain uh in the june 2022 where we have these sort of a multi model systems generating these amazing images and we are not very far from where we can just write a script and it can automatically generate movies using ai systems so that will be very interesting to look at if we if we really have a system like that so these uh, works on a specific uh, state of the art approach called transformers uh, students who will be enrolled into uh, cds data science major or data science minor they will definitely be going through these kind of uh, models called transformers which are the state of the art in deep learning so there is will be a specific course called deep learning where there are so many prerequisites to be covered and then finally the state of the art which is currently uh, the ai architecture which is generating all these interesting applications so this transformers is a 
uh, approach which was developed by google themselves and it is it is dominating in multiple domains so so with this i would uh, conclude my talk so this is all about uh, the recent innovations that is happening in the ai domain so if uh, there are any questions then uh, we will take those questions as well so sanjeev so i hand it over to the organizer yes yes thank you sir you can maybe uh, you can stop sharing your screen i think it's still on share screen yes okay yeah thank you sir for those very very enlightening now we have some questions on the chat box i will take that first and then okay. others who wish to um, ask questions you can raise your hands and then i can ask you to unmute and you can speak as well okay so the first question is what is your teaching approach I mean, that sounds very broad but if there's some yeah, yeah so the one uh, one aspect uh, especially in in the aspects of uh, computing and data science so what we will taking is that we are not only doing the theory part or only trying to do some practical aspects but we will try to maintain a balance between both the theory as well as the practical so that is that will be the best approach to learn these kind of advanced uh, topics so that is the uh, essential teaching approach that we adapt i hope that answers that specific question okay in the future can alpha code replace all the programmers as it is more profitable for corporations <laughs> so uh, we we all have these uh, uh, questions about whether ai is going to replace uh, all the human labors or or many uh, repetitive tasks will that be uh, replaced uh, what we expect is that not replace the programmers but we use these ai systems to assist the programmers to come up with better quality solutions so that is where we are actually looking at and even there are a lot of ethical uh, committees related with ai being discussing about the threat to human jobs and so forth we don't see ai as a threat to human uh, job opportunities and so forth but instead we expect that it will help to improve the quality of work so that is what we are uh, expecting uh, yes okay uh, so that's that's a good point are you saying that it would help but there will be no it will not make people redundant in that sense uh, so we are not or they will yeah. be forced to go to a higher level of operation correct so if there are some very boring tasks that a human themselves do not find anything innovative or interesting that can be completely replaced with ai system and you up the humans can uh, so we can look for better job opportunities okay thank you sir now we have okay uh, who is this is kun i think hari krishna s are you here on the call hari krishna if you are could you raise your hand because you have asked a question for which i am not able to hari krishna oh, so there is a there is a science fiction movie uh, named yes, her her yeah so yeah so uh, so you are asking like can such things happen so uh, that is something related with uh, what in artificial intelligence we call it as general artificial intelligence uh, artificial general intelligence or sometimes people refer to that as technological singularity uh, in science fiction this actually exists but in practice uh, having an ai system which is good at several tasks is we are nowhere near to that there are a lot of challenges that we face uh, as a researcher we know that uh, even uh, trying to distinguish between cats and dog itself is not an easy task even now with uh, all these advancements we talk there can be certain places where an ai system cannot clearly distinguish between a cat and dog so we are we are nowhere near to that but in future will that happen uh, we don't know we can we can never say that it is impossible but we don't know how how long we need to wait to reach to that particular stage yes thank you 
Next one is in AI's main role is to do tasks that humans can't do, then what humans can do. There are, there are, see, there are places where, say, for example, in extreme weather conditions, we need to uh, service certain, um, certain devices. And if we train uh, AI systems to do that, then that will be good. But it cannot be always to say that we need AI systems where human, what humans can't do. But we expect that AI systems will assist, uh, assist uh, the human task. Uh, even say, for example, in calamities like uh, fire accidents where humans can't quickly go in there to see whether there are some victims. But if you have AI systems which can like a drone sort of a thing or other kind of uh, small robots which can navigate, self-navigate into that uh, fire accident locations and find out whether there are actually someone trapped in there so that it can be uh, life-saving as well. So in that aspect, it is yes, so we need such systems, but it is it shouldn't be restricted only to tasks which humans can't do. So next one, this is a nice question for the hockey and puck image. Did the artificial intelligence system find out the country by grouping? Is it like they first identified the sport and matching the jerseys or is it in what other way could have happened? Yeah, so there are certain cues based on which it can identify, like uh, for that hockey. So it, it understands uh, those uh, kind of dress that uh, they are wearing. So that will be the primary cue based on which it makes those kind of uh, predictions. Sometimes it can go wrong as well. So that, even that one of the slides that was showing that AI systems indeed make mistakes in, in their predictions. But it, it, uh, the, the question that you asked is a, it's a, another important problem in the AI domain is about when an AI system makes prediction, can you explain why that AI system made that particular prediction? It is a very important problem to be solved in AI. So that is a specific domain called explainability. So we, we call talk as explainability of uh, models. There are a lot of research works going on in that uh, aspect as well. Like why a particular AI program or a model took that particular decision to make that prediction. So it is still a, a open research problem. That could tie up to the next question. Can you talk about some other research areas in computer science? Uh, specifically in computer science, uh, there are a lot of interesting research uh, domains like uh, for, for several problems, can you come up with a better optimal solutions uh, to a lot of uh, important problems? So that comes under uh, algorithms and complexity theories. And uh, within computer science, there are also other domains like networking where we need to solve about how we can optimally solve it. So basically how we can improve the existing systems. There are several domains within which we can uh, work on. Okay. Ah, yes. Uh, very nice question here. Uh, okay, sir, thank you so much for this really interesting and informative lecture. This is from Abhishek Vijay. Uh, okay, he's thanks. joined the CDS. He's from Gantor. I know that much. My question is, how far is too far in the AI domain? In the sense, are there rules and regulations and laws being formed to help AI grow in a contained and controlled manner so that it not be a threat to humans one day? I think he must have watched that Will Smith movie, I Robo, one too many times. Uh, even interesting. So when, when I was doing my first talk, I was when I was working as a computer scientist in Dublin, Ireland. So there was a circular given out to all the researchers in the AI domain from the European Union. So this, this particular movement happened in European Union first. So they said like, you shouldn't actually deploy any AI systems into the society where you cannot, you yourself cannot explain why that AI system took that decision. So there are a lot of regulations coming up in like, it's the, when an AI system is making some predictions and if you cannot explain why it took that decision, you shouldn't be deploying that. And we see that deep learning is a approach of machine learning, which is solving a lot of important problems. But the downside with deep learning is that 
explainability is a challenge. You cannot actually give a proper mathematical justification behind why a deep learning model took that particular decision. So now these particular uh, restrictions has been also uh, adapted for, by US as well. So there are these challenges. So, but there are such regulatory bodies working on uh, what are some ethical aspects related with AI and so forth. So they all are working towards uh, a safer society and AI with a safer society, not a harmful society. Thank you. Uh, how much quantum computing, I think what they mean is how much can quantum computing improve image recognition and AI? And I think this next question is on quantum computing seems interesting. Is it about making the computer hardware even smaller? Okay. So as of now in computer vision domains, uh, quantum computing algorithms are not nowhere like uh, making any contributions, but it is still an open problem to solve and, and adapt. So uh, even we don't have actual quantum hardware computers to test it out. Or all this. So we are just in the beginning stage of quantum computers, making some contributions in, in the computing domain itself. So we are very early to make any kind of comments about how quantum computing can improve uh, the domain of artificial intelligence and computer vision. But there has been a specific research domain called quantum uh, machine learning. So that is something which is moving towards uh, your specific question but it is still in a very infant stage. So there is nothing uh, significant to comment with the contribution of quantum computing in the domain of AI yet, but we are looking forward to it. Even Google is significantly funding the research towards quantum computing in the AI domain. So we are yet to see results from, from that aspect. And, and yes, the other question, quantum computing is, is it's not about just making a computer smaller, but it is about uh, coming up with an entirely different computing model as against what the com typical computer uh, model that we are familiar with. So just with, a, with just an electron having a positive spin and negative spin, which we can have it like a two different states, can we make use of those uh, two uh, or binary distinguishable states to make computation? So that is where the entire idea of uh, quantum computing uh, arrives at. So yes, it is trying essentially to reduce the size of the hardware, but when you are trying to reduce the hardware size, there are some quantum effects which introduces errors. So we are still technology wise, we are, we are not that good at having hardwares which are so small. So we are good at nanotechnology level, but at a quantum level, we are still not yet there. Technology has yet to be developed to handle them without introducing errors in their state. A slight change in the temperature changes the quantum state and that is introducing error and that will mess up with the computation. So we are still in the, even though we are talking about quantum computers for like past more than 20 years, but still we are nowhere there to the practical quantum computers. Thank you. Um, next question is, is there any other way of machine learning other than deep learning that is trending? Uh, there is sure. a new, yeah, there is a new approach. Uh, it, is, it is again close to deep learning, but there is an entirely different way of uh, addressing uh, these kind of problems, which is called uh, geometry uh, deep learning. But that is again, uh, in the line of deep learning. So till now, we are actually progressing along the line of deep learning, but no new, uh, entirely new approach uh, is popular as of now. We, ne we need to think about that. It's a, it's a very interesting question, uh, but we don't know an answer yet. As of now, deep learning is the trending one. Okay, uh, this, I think the same person asking this rather provoking question. Is it possible for artificial intelligence in the future program its own artificial intelligence program? 
Yeah. <laughs> uh, this is yeah, like. Yeah, right. So these are like, again, uh, more like a uh, science, science fiction, mm -hmm. but we are, we are practically, we don't have any such systems yet. Okay. But if we ask, is it possible? We, we would say that it should be possible. But as of now, do we have? We don't. But we can't say no to that particular question. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> no, sounds really like some very futuristic movie. <laughs> Correct, yes. So, the last, okay. Uh, next is a note of thanks from Bob uh, Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Any other questions? either on the chat box or if you wish to raise your hands, unmute, please let me know because I don't see any more questions now. The participants, take a second if you wish to ask, ask something. Any other questions? Actually, I have a question. Since they're all talking about movies and things, I remember watching that movie, uh, Minority Report. Has that got to do with AI and you know, uh, <laughs> that is uh, that is uh, some technology about uh, predicting some future actions, but yes, uh, I don't exactly co correlate it with artificial okay. intelligence. Okay, yeah. that is another time so, sort of a time travel based uh, science fiction. Okay. Oh, okay. This is a, some info about Sai University, please. That is a rather broad question because that's a separate session by itself. I can do the initial bit and maybe Sir can just talk about the CDS program briefly. Sai University was founded in 2018 through the private university, Sai University Private University Act passed by Tamil Nadu Legislative Assembly. Uh, we started with master's programs in law and fellowships in law. And our first batch of um, undergrad started last year, they joined in 2021, where we have two schools, the School of Computing and Data Science and School of Arts and Science, which offers BA and BSc honors degrees with a lot of interdisciplinarity possibilities where you can take a major in one uh, program and minors in others across schools, not just within the arts and science, but across with the computing and data science as well. Now, computing and data science similarly is a BTEC program, four years while the BABACs are three years and can be four years as well, honors degree. And um, I think then if you want to briefly outline the computing data science, uh, the broad vision and sort of special specializations, uh, I can leave that to you. Yes, uh, even uh, with the School of Computing and Data Science, there are uh, two majors that we are currently looking at. One is to major in computer science, the other is to major in data science. But the degree that will be awarded is BTEC in computing and data science. But within that, you can major and minor in, so major in computer science or data science, and you can choose your minor as something completely different from a technical domain. So maybe like a music or psychology or uh, literature or anything of that sort. And likewise, the, the other, in other direction, uh, students from arts and science, they can actually minor in computer science or in data science as well. So we, we are open to all these kind of uh, different combinations and whoever finds the subjects interesting, uh, they can tailor those elective subjects such that they can minor in either in computer science or in uh, data science. And data science uh, students also, also this option to minor in mathematics as well, which will be a very good combination if you are interested in especially doing, uh, continuing a research career, like either in academics or in industry, that would be a good option as well to minor in mathematics. All right. Thank you. Uh, sir, now we have a question subject based. Does deep learning play a major role in real life simulation? like a simulation for firefighters, road accidents, decision making that instant. Um, now, as of now, deep learning is not actually um, helping with building these kind of simulation softwares that is entirely done by uh, other programming aspects, which also includes computer graphics. But uh, deep learning, uh, these kind of uh, simulation softwares that we are talking about, it helps to build AI systems that can actually learn to 
uh, address challenges in such uh, firefighters, for example. So it can help the AI system or a deep learning system with data. So that is the way it, it does. In fact, uh, for uh, self-navigating cars, autopilot, for example, or self-driving cars, they actually use these kind of simulators to train uh, how it should work in, in actually in the roads. Right. I think when he meant simulation, was he also this, uh, Hari Vishnu was asked this question, was he meaning like some kind of predictive mechanism that this would be the different scenarios of uh, using uh, deep learning? I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not exactly sure about if, if that is what is meant there. Yes, that's what he has said. He has said, yes, sir, now that he's put in the chat. So I don't think he uh, meant from a graphic point of simulation. He meant uh -huh. like given a scenario that you know that when a fire breaks out or earthquake breaks out in deep learning based on historical data create like... Yeah, it is possible. It is possible. And uh, there is an entire domain called AI for social good. And these are the kind of uh, AI systems that has been developed uh, under that particular category okay. AI for social good and especially for forest fire not not only like uh, within the society but so, uh, forest fire and hmm. things like that uh, AI systems has been developed right I was actually I mean just recently reading uh, that AI systems are being developed to understand crop cycles disease for farmers so, in agriculture, so, that, so that is so wherever we have data now, we will be able to come up with AI systems, assisting, right. assisting. Right. Right. So that, that is not that, just restricted to one IT domain or anything. That's right. what I was mentioning. Like it, it has a huge possibility right. in health, right. health sector, etc. Which is very good because they were able to then avoid cultivating during a possible disease cycle right. and lose all that time. I think they're also using it to understand which seeds produce better yield better and so forth so, so, so in short we are expecting that ai systems will assist in all these domains to improve the quality quality of uh, whatever whether it is the quality of living or the quality of uh, agriculture or, or any domain that we take right thank you um, now is there a relationship between a point of view and error like in one image which considered a cycle as a scale port it was top view which might have been confusing because the cycle from that view did resemble skateboard. Yes, correct. So these post, exactly. So these post variations are one, so that, that we refer to as post variations that what you are mentioning as point of view and error. So these post variations are one important challenging task and deep learning is somehow able to handle all these post variations and come up with a reasonably good predictions, which was not otherwise possible using previous approaches. But with deep learning approaches, we are able to do it. And if you have more training data sets with various different forces, deep learning system will come up with a better prediction. So wherever we see errors, it is because that deep learning system didn't get sufficient variations of that particular scenario to be trained. So that is why we see the, those errors. Thank you. Um, okay, these are more generic. What is the batch size is the university now on the city campus or main campus? Okay, I'll quickly answer this because we're really trying to stick to the subject here, but um, batch size at present first batch of just the undergrad is 37. And the new batch that's coming in 2022, we are expecting it to be about 100. So that's what I can say because the admissions is still going on. Is the university in the city campus or main campus? Well, up to last semester, it was in the city campus. But for the incoming batch, the academics is going to start on the main campus. Now, any upcoming sessions or university admissions or any open house sessions in future? Yes, most definitely. I'll be handling those. Uh, since I don't know your name, you're, you've come under anonymous attendee. Just do look out um, for any um, emailers, WhatsApp. Uh, we'll be putting it up on social media. We will be doing uh, open sessions for the, if you're asking for the, 2023 batch, we'll be starting that soon. We're still wrapping up 2022 admissions. So I hope that answers your question. So I think there are no more questions and uh, we should, it's been now a good hour and a half. So 
Oh, 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 one second. There is a good question here in the chat. I didn't see this. Oh, it's a question or a comment. I think one employee of Google was suspended for disclosing that one of the AI system was sent in a track. And this came up even when we met first time, I think. Yeah. Uh, so my yeah. question to you is, that should be the AI, that should the AI, AI work be more transparent or should it be as it is now? Should the AI work be more transparent or should it be as it is now? See, when it comes to commercialization, there are some restrictions of being transparent. If it is an academic research, then that is perfectly fine. So it can be more transparent research. But when it comes to industries, especially they make money out of their particular research work, there are limitations to which they can be transparent. So that is implicitly there in any business. So we can't actually demand industries to be more transparent. But in academics, they, they really do. And even they're so transparent that for all their research works, they also publish their source code and anyone can access them and reproduce those results and so forth. But whatever results the industry-based researchers are generating, there are these challenges about reproducibility as well. And that is there to exist because of commercial aspects. Okay, I think then uh, it's been a very fruitful session. I don't see any more questions and we have some pretty interesting questions as well. So thank you, Professor. Yes. Thank you. And thank you. thank you for your time and thank you participants for joining us. Keep looking out because we're going to be doing more such sessions from the School of Computing Data Science on various aspects of the CDS program. So just look out for all these social media posts, emailers, WhatsApp, and we'll see you soon. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Sanjeev, and thanks to the participants. Bye. Thank you.